Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In today's video I have Genshin Impact version 4.0 phase 2 test runs. Uh, probably only one test run as you're going to see that there's only one new character and I'm just going to, to do just a quick highlight for all the other uh, characters. Let's start with Noel. Noel is a character that everyone should have for free. Um, because she is guaranteed to drop in the beginner banner that we all got when we started the game. If you still have the beginner banner, then use it up. Because it is literally only 20 wishes for the price of 16. It's not going to go up in value over time. I know uh, for some players, it is using up the banner and having it disappear from the menu forever is akin to crossing the Rubicon. But it's not. Just use it up and so. Now, as far as Noel goes, she is very easy to build. You just need you if you can beat the geo hypostasis, everything else is gravy. Because that geo hypostasis is going to drop all the topaz you need. Alberries are easy to find in Mondstadt. Resistance books are not any harder to get than any other book. Hilly Trolls are easy to beat. The Balan is the easiest of the weekly bosses, and so on and so forth. Now, I would say that the difference in how you should build Noel is really going to come down to what her constellation is on your account. Um, the biggest constellation difference is going to be whether you have her at C6 or not. Because at C6, sweeping time increases Noel's attack by an additional 50% of her defense. Additionally, every opponent defeated during the skill duration adds to adds one second to the duration up to 10 seconds. So sweeping time is her burst. She is going to have mo for for almost all of us, she's going to have a pretty high defense. Because you're going to use, you're going to build her up to to get her shield up as much as you can. And at C1, you have while sweeping time and breastplate are both in effect. The chance of the breastplate's healing effects activated increases to 100%. That just means you're going to get used to using her uh, elemental shield, uh, elemental skill, elemental burst at the same time. First skill is basically what gives, gives her shield. So if you get her to C6, you're going to want to build her as a GODP. Uh, if you don't have her at C6 and you want her uh, shield uh, on the, on the uh, field, um, then you can pretty much build her as a high defense support. So that's why when you see under recommended weapons, threat is what you'd want to do when you've got her at C6 and you're going to use her as a DPS. If you aren't going to do that, then you just want to get, you want to just ignore everything else and put the highest amount of, of defense on her that you possibly can. And then later on, you're going to switch her over to a DPS build. And the way you build her as a DPS is very similar to the way that you build just about anyone as a DPS. Just, just take where you usually think about attack and replace it with defense and you're good to go. And then once you, if you have a high defense set that you're getting rid of, you know, give, a, give some thoughts to some of your, your uh, Geo supports like Yunjin or Goro, because they could probably use that same set. Her best artifacts, and there really isn't any other choice, is the Husk of Opulent Dreams. This used to be a bit of a problem for her because it's an in Inazuma, but now it's also in the strong box, so you can get it pretty easy. So, uh, yeah, this is a really good C6 uh, as far as whether to, to pull for her specifically or not. As much as a great C6 that she is, keep in mind that she also does appear in Paimon's Bargains twice a year. So if you're close, uh, then you could pro and you're willing to wait. You could probably just get her in Paimon's bargains that way. 
and that, that, that perhaps assumes that you are someone who is saving up your uh, masterless star glitter. Um, okay, so now we're, no, none, of, none of that, none of that. I'm talking about Osmantis one. Okay. Um, so Zhongli has far none the best shield in the game. Uh, I I love using Noel. I use her a lot more than Zhongli, but there's no question. Even I can say that no Noel's shield is better than his. Zhongli has the best shield in the game. Period. End of story. Now, look at the. You, you probably didn't see my uh, my little uh, facts table change because a lot of it is exactly the same. Same boss. Same gem. Uh, he uses Core Lapis to level up, which is not too hard to find. It seems it's all over the place in the way. If you have the uh, Chasm open, you'll find it a lot easier under there. Um, but overall, not a hard one to build. Um, he uses the um, he uses one of the uh, weekly drops of one of the, probably the second weekly boss that you unlock. You unlock that boss at the end of chapter one. I probably shouldn't be so uh, be uh, trying to not spoil who that is, but um, if you know, you know. Uh, but yeah, that, that boss is not particularly hard. To, uh, now, as far as Zhongli and whether you want and what weapon you want. I suppose that depends on whether you want to max out his shield or whether you want him to do significant damage and have a slightly lesser shield. Uh, Black Tassel is what I, I like to use for him. It boosts his HP by quite a bit. It is a three-star weapon. You'll find it without, you'll find it without even uh, trying. And you really don't even need to refine it because its passive basically does bonus damage against slime. And really, when are you going to use someone like Zhongli to battle slime? Or what, rather, rather, let me back that up. When are you going to care about doing extra damage against slimes? Yeah, I, I've thought so. So, um, but yes, that would be the weapon I would recommend if you want to max out a shield. If you want to make him kind of more of a, I wouldn't recommend using him as a DPS, but if you want to basically just bring him in, throw that meteor down and with his elemental burst and then pull out, then you'll want to make him as a kind of a DPS, but just know that he's not going to need to be on the field that long. And his uh, his energy requirements for that burst is actually pretty low, so you 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 be you you don't have to worry too much about building it as a burst support. Um, just build them like a DPS. And um, as far as the recommended artifacts, either way, I recommend tenacity of the Millilith. You could do a build where you do two piece of each of the two hit points um, domains and and try try to get that but that four piece set for uh, that four, four piece set bonus for tenacity of the millith is actually quite formidable so I I like using that whenever I can uh, but if you already have a four piece tenacity user on the same team you could go for the two hit point the two HP uh, there. You could also go for uh, tenacity or either of the two uh, HP boosts, and then another two pit, two two piece set. Um, Archaic Petro would probably be a good one if you're going for a burst support, perhaps. Um, but yeah, you j just just um, just brainstorm, figure out what you'd like to do. I have heard people say that. Uh, Emblem of Severed Fate is good for him. I wouldn't, I don't, I, it, it could work. It would make his burst uh, e do even more damage, but you're not going to give him a crazy amount of energy recharge. Not someone who's who only requires 40. 
But you could if you want to. Uh, and, oh, I should talk about his constellations too. So when I'm looking at a five-star character, I really only look at the first two because if you're st if you're starting to get into C3 or C4 or all the way to C6 territory, then you're really really investing. But this is just a question of can you can you get a little bit of extra investment and make that character a little bit better? And uh, with C1. Uh, you can use his you can use his skill to put down two stone steels on the on the uh, on the ground whereas you're normally just uh, limited to one keep in mind that these steels do uh, geo damage and they resonate with other constructs you may have put on the ground so you could you could have a good network of, of a lot of geo damage if you have C1 it all depends on who you have along with him. If he's your only Geo character, my guess is that this probably won't do a whole lot. But if you have him, for example, with Ning Wong, keep in mind that her uh, Jade Curtain will count as a construct in this. Or if you have Geo Traveler, uh, his or her uh, constructs will resonate with this as well. And and then C2, Planet Befall, which is his first, grants nearby characters on the field a Jade Shield when it descends. This can this is really good if you don't want to to be bothered with actually casting the elemental shield elemental skill. Because this basically just gives you the shield. And again, this probably works better if you're he's the only Geo character and you don't care about the steel. Uh, so, going to here, if you're going to, if you find that you're using them a lot in the spiral abyss, could be worth your, could be worth your. Work. And then C three will uh, up his skill, so or, so you'll have to go to C uh, five to uh, up the level of his first. Uh, C two, like I said, if he is if he is a significant part of your spiral abyss team. That might be worth gi giving it a try, um, but other than that, uh, if if you're just using him as a as a shield support, then you won't need any of options. Okay, so now we're done with him. Now let's talk about this guy. He's not as bad as as some other characters I can mention, but I don't know. I'm not. I've never been that particularly hyped about. Aglia, or child, if you if you uh, if you if you would rather use that name. Um, so he, his ascension boss is the Hydro Hypostasis and in Inazuma. Not a hard boss to get to, but you will need to have Inazuma unlocked in order to battle it. Um, the Hypostasis will drop all pretty much all the gems he needs. The Star Conscious you'll find around all of the beaches in Liyue. Uh, and you may even have a few left over if you just finished building uh, Yelan in the previous banner. Um, interestingly enough, he requires the two eludes to, uh, to ascend and to build his talents up. Interestingly enough, he requires the freedom books from Mondstadt rather than anything from Liyue. Uh, and Shard of a Foul Legacy, same boss that I talked about for Zhang Li, drops that uh, item as well. Again, again, remember that this is gonna that this that boss unlocks at the end of chapter one. Um, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, his recommended weapon. I'm putting this when I, whenever there's a five star character that has a signature weapon, I just put down the substat. So the Polar Star will give you crit rate. So anything with a crit rate uh, substat as far as as far as bows, if you put that on Tartaglia and you get the Polar Star later, you won't have to completely redo. Uh, as far as the recommended artifacts, it's probably it's either Nymph Stream or Heart of Depth. 
Uh, I've heard people say that one is better than the other, or people say it the other way around too. So just pick one. Um, don't, but don't uh, mix and match. Don't go for the two pair. Just go for one or the other. Um, if you, I would say, from what I hear, Nim Stream is perhaps a little bit uh, higher rated than Heart of Depth. But if you have a Heart of Depth set ready to go for them, then I wouldn't bother trying to get uh, trying to get the other one. Okay, his constellations. Um, so the C1 decreases the cooldown of his elemental skill by 20%. That's actually quite useful. Sometimes we see that, and it and it basically just knocks out one second. But you see, if he uses maximum cooldown, if, if he uses his max cooldown, which is 45 seconds, that means it's going to take nine seconds. And so you'll be able to use the skill more often. Uh, so I think depending on how important the skill is to you, uh, decreasing the cooldown of that could be uh, could be very useful. And the next one, when opponents are affected by affected by Riptide or defeated, Riptide is part of his burst. Our tag that regenerates for elemental energy. Um, would be useful if his energy requirement was high, but it's 60, so it's really not. So unlike Zhongli, where I think you could go further, where the further you go, definitely the, the more you get. I think, if, I think if you wanted to get a little bit of value from Tartaglia, you could get C1, but I would stop there. C3 will just uh, bump his elemental skill up, so. Yeah, I would say C1 is probably as far as you need to go for a child, given that there's pro a lot of other characters that you can get that will give you more value. Okay, that's Tartaglia. And so now let's go to our last uh, re replay character, and that is Sayu. Sayu is an Animo character. And when we think about animal characters, more often than not, we think about the Viridescent Venerer set. Sayu is not uh, any different. So um, now Sayu has to use one of the um, use one to beat one of the harder bosses, in my opinion, in this game, the Magu Kenki, uh, which is in Inazuma. So you won't be leveling up Sayu if you do not have Inazuma unlocked. At least you won't be leveling her up very far. Um, so the Magu Kenki will drop Turquoise, but it also drops Jade, which is Kyle. So when you are working on Sayu, keep in mind that you may have to get some Dust of Azoth to get the rest of Turquoise you need, or you might be walking, your, walking over to Monstat to defeat the animal hypostasis and get, get an easy uh, influx of turquoise. Um, so the additional materials, Crystal Marrow, is really only found in maybe one or two islands in Inazuma, and it's everywhere. You can look up a farming guide to see to, to be able to get it fairly easily, but Crystal Marrow is not. The good thing is, is that it's all kind of clumped together and just a few places. You won't you won't have to grind it for too long if, if even if you're starting for nothing. Whopper flower loot. Um, some people have a lot of it. Some people don't. Some people run uh, from whopper flowers every time they see them. And I have plenty, but uh, keep in mind that you are if you are building Sayu and you avoid them like the plague, that you will have to. At least a little bit. Light books are, are in Inazuma. The Gilded Scale is part of a is dropped from a boss in Liwei. You'll have to do, uh, I believe it's Zhongli's second uh, second character story, or it might be the first one. I keep forgetting which one was which, but it is one of them that that unlocks them. Um, now, as far as 
her recommended weapon and uh, her Veridus and Venerer set. It all kind of depends on how you intend to use her. Uh, I tend to use her just as a um, an exploration, particularly in the Sumeru Desert, because her animo rolling uh, skill uh, can basically just n knock all of those little sand dunes out, make things a lot easier as well, particularly when you're trying to explore. Plus, that that uh, Huyan Dash is my favorite uh, fast, faster travel uh, mechanic to use. It's actually, the only I think it's the only one I've unlocked. You can make it even. You can make it go even faster if there's another Animo character in her party, so that you get that elemental resonance that makes uh, the movement skill, de movement speed increase. Of course, you could also have either Dea or Rosaria in the party to all uh, to further increase based on whether it's right. Um, but you get the idea. Uh, if you're going to use her to um, if you want to max out, I think the best thing to do, basically kind of the same way that we went with Kazaha, and just put as much elemental mastery on her as you think you can. Um, if you're just using her for exploration, you don't have to worry too much about it being exactly right. Having a relatively high elemental mastery will still get some really good swirl damage of course, if you're taking her into the Spiral Abyss, you'll need to get as much as humanly possible. You could go the uh, energy recharge route with her as well, but I don't recommend it. Just go EM. Everything will be fine. Uh, if, if you want her to be a battery again, but, uh, but anyway, get the idea. All right, so that is every all the new characters. So let's talk about the one, the only uh, new character that we have. And go in there. There we go. So our new character is Fremine. I'll bring up after bring him up here because we'll, for whatever reason he is not in the archive yet. Um, so Fremine, uh, I'm not going to put any. Uh, any recommendations for artifacts or weapons down? We're just going to read through his uh, his talents and see and take a look at what the uh, what the uh, test run domain has. Go from there. I have some ideas. Uh, but I just I I'd want to see how the test run works first before I. Commit. Okay. So talents. Deep water navigation, just gotta get this out of the way. It decreases aquatic stamina consumption for your own parties by 35%. I think this is based on what I've seen in, in 4.0 and doing a lot of underwater navigation. I don't think this really I don't think this really helps at all. Um, it would be it's a nice to have, but I would but I wouldn't I would rather have lots of maximum hit point characters in my in my dive team. So uh, to that extent, you know, having a Zhongli that, that has a massive amount of hit points, that's gonna be, a, he's gonna be a lot more valuable, in my opinion. Okay, let's, let's go for the regular ones. So um, the normal attack, pretty much the same as what you'd expect from just about any Claymore user. Um, is elemental skill is pressurized flow and it performs an upward thrust that deals proud damage and causes Fremine to enter purse timer for 10 seconds. While purse timer is active, this elemental skill will be turned into shattering pressure. Shattering pressure executes different sorts of attacks based on the pressure level of the purse timer and then cancels the purse timer. So your base. So once you begin the elemental skill, you will build it up either to level zero, either just do it on, do it right away, get level zero, or you can build it all the way up to level four. 
So level zero unleashes a vertical cut that deals crowd damage. Levels one through three and unleashes a vertical cut alongside purse, dealing cryo damage and physical damage. Damage dealt scales based on pressure level, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. And level four borrows the power of a fully pressurized purse to deal physical damage. Meanwhile, normal attack flowing eddies will be replaced by shattering. So that's, that's the... That's what flowing eddies is basically what his attack is called. The purse timer when Fremenet uses normal attacks, you'll also unleash waves of frost that deal crowd damage and increase the purse pressure level. The, the accompany crowd, accompanying crowd damage dealt this way is considered elemental skill damage. And then he uses Numa, which is the which is the uh, the light bricks. So we now have three characters. If I remember, if I'm remembering them correctly, um, that used that, and Lynette is the only one that uses the other one. At least I think I have that right. I always forget which one is, which one's one, and which one. Uh, now, when you look at his uh, his um, skill attribute, you'll see that level zero shattering pressure does 200.5 percent damage. That is based on that is based on his, that is all cryo damage according to the talent info that we just read. Then you look at level four shattering damage and it does 243.4%. But that is all physical damage, again, based on the talent information that we read. And levels one through three in the, in the middle, you can see that it start at the, the higher you go up, more physical damage it does, and less crowd damage. So, uh, I think that that the strategy for building a Fremenet is really going to be based on um, whether you're going to have them do a lot of crowd damage or do a lot of physical. Damage. Uh, it seems to weigh have a little bit heavier on physical damage. If you, if you see the percentage, so. If you can get it all the way up to level four and do that 243.4% physical damage, that's going to be more valuable than the 200.5 bio damage at level four. Then Shadow Hunter's Ambush unleashes a wave of untouchable cold dealing AOE crowd damage, resetting the cooldown timer of the elemental skill pressurized flow and causing Fremenet to enter the subnautical hunter mode for 10 seconds. While in that mode, Fremenet's resistance to interruption will increase and his elemental skill pressurized flow will have the following buffs that the cooldown will be decreased by 70%. Normal attacks will increase the purse timer by one and additional pressure level and the frost released by his normal attacks deal 200% of their original damage. And nothing, nothing too crazy in the skill attributes, particularly compared to his skill. So saturation deep dive when Fremne unleashes pressurized flow, the shatter, shattering pressure of the first timer is yet to reach level four. Cool down of the pressurized flow will be decreased by one second. That is something that you'll get on your way to leveling him up. Um, and then when Fremenet triggers shatter against opponents, which is physical damage against Frozen, damage dealt by the pressurized flow shattering pressure will be increased by 40% for five seconds. So let's quickly take a look at his constellations, which I should have done before I went live. The crit rate of the pressurized flow shattering pressure will be increased by 15%. This is C1. Um, that, that, that could be very useful. Um, unleashing pressurized flow shattering pressure will, be, will restore two energy to Fremenet. The pressure four shattering pressure is unleashed. This will restore three energy. And his energy requirements 60, so that's kind of in the middle. Skip to C3, we'll look at C4. 
After friend may triggers frozen shatter or superconduct against opponents, his attack will be increased by 9% for six seconds. Maximum two stacks. Maybe. And C6. After Fremnade triggers Frozen Shatter or Superconduct against opponents, his crit damage will be increased by 12% for 6 seconds, max stack 3. So this increases his attack. This increases crit damage. And Pressurized Flow is the one that you get later, so you'll get the... You'll get the Oh, you get you get his normal attack leveled up at C three. That's the, that's that same weird thing that we were doing now. Okay, on to the on to the trial, and hopefully, and and you probably read my my little blurb in the bottom right. Um, that you you pretty much will need to be to be messing around in in. Uh, Montaigne in order to level them up, but nothing currently requires you to actually have done anything before. And everyone, even if you haven't gotten that far, can basically just visit. But anyway, get the idea. All right. So I have a guess. Um, well, I think uh, is. Is the way is the way to go with him. Um, okay, so they they picked the royal great sword. Royal weapons are available in Paimon's bargains, and they appear on the I believe they appear in the even months. So right now you'll see the Blackcliff weapons. So wait until October, and you'll be able to get the royal great sword if you so choose. I'm not a big fan of the, the royal great sword myself. Um, uh, but it, it does, uh, upon damaging opponent increases his crit rate by 8%, and a crit rate, crit hit, removes all stacks. Like I said, it's not my biggest, I, I, I could think of some better attack substat weapons than the Royal Greatsword, uh, particularly ones that won't uh, waste your uh, Master of Start. Okay. Blizzard Strayer. That actually wasn't the, the, the set I was thinking of, despite that he's a trial character. And this stuff's normal. Okay, so what 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 do we have in total? Okay, so so yeah, they they, they pick a, a lesser crit rate because they they went for a four-piece blizzard strip, which will give him a crit rate um, against Characters that are um, affected by cryo and characters that are full. a decent amount of energy recharge. Wouldn't have expected a whole lot. Um, maybe a little bit more elemental mastery than I thought that, that they that they would go with. Go with the went with the they went with the big cryo damage. But I think is a mistake. I think that his physical damage actually more formidable than his, uh, than his cryo damage. All right, you, you must be getting kind of, you must be getting bored of me talking so, so much. So let's go ahead and just get this started. Let the show begin. <laughs> Frost is coming. I didn't mean to. Uh, 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 getting here. I didn't mean to go straight for the elemental skill. I meant to kind of build up to it. Okay. Alright. Well, okay. Let's try that elemental skill again. Okay, so you can see it and see it right next to him. It doesn't take that much to it. You're open. It doesn't look like it takes that much to uh, get it to see to, to to level four. Watch, watch you get. You're open. I'm just gonna let it. Please no. You're open. 
That's right. I can it all. Okay, so that's how much it does. But it's kind of a general idea of how much it does at level zero. Let's try it again. This time I'm gonna get it all the way up to level four. Frost is coming. Get in here. I really think that. I mean, I really think that that the level four is the way to go, which makes me think that physical damage is the way I would. I would go with them. You're open. Let's go. Commencing cleanup. Frost is coming. You're open. Parry. Neither one is particularly. Frost is coming. Getting here. That did quite a bit. Now he has eight across. Parry. I want to try that one more time. I have to. You're open. You're open. You're open. What you got? I was about to say I might have to. You're open. Do, uh, Get in gear. Oh. You're open. Frost is coming. And see how. You're open. You're open. Dodge this. All right, let's try this again. Getting gear. Okay. Pretty good. It You're doesn't open. really take too much to get the level four. You really have to try not. You're open. You're open. So that makes me think that physical damage better. It feels more physical damage. You're open. And you're really, you're, you're open. And you're really, uh, you're open. not using it for maximum attention. Frost is coming. I'll protect us. Hey, you're open. I don't know. Get in here. This you're is open. a little, I mean, I could say that this is maybe a little confusing, but you're talking to someone who who put the time in to learn how to mess with uh, Shinyan's uh, set. And that's one that a lot of people have thought, because it's that, that complicated. So I think you'd have to have the same, you'd have to put roughly the same amount of effort into this. Because it's all about balancing whether you want him to do bad damage or whether you want to do physical damage. I think that physical damage is the way to go. I really think physical damage is the way to go. If you're going to build it. Now, the question that I would have for me is would I ever use someone like that? I have Xin Yan built as not a full out physical damage machine, but she does quite a bit of his. And I'm building Eula right now, who will probably outclass Xin Yan in physical damage once she's ready to go. Um, yeah, that, that, I don't think Blizzard, I think Blizzard Strayer would be the wrong. Shinyan is in my room. I can show you what I have for her. I think that what I have for her, as far as the artifact set, is what I would have started with. Um, maybe with a physical damage goblet, but the the same the same idea. Two piece blood stained, two piece pale flame. That would give Remine a 50% physical damage. Now, if you really, really wanted to make sure that you didn't completely clobber his, his cryo damage, then you could do the same thing that I did with Xin Yan, and maybe that is something I would be doing, which is basically just giving him the cryo damage goblet uh, with that 
two pair set of bloodstained chivalry and pale belt flame. You could go for a four piece of either one, but uh, I don't think it's really worth it. I am going for a four piece pale flame on Eula, but even that I'm not sure. I might just go for the two, two pair for that for her as well. Um, but yeah, no, this is, this is why I would, based on what I saw and what I felt during the test run, this is where I would, I would go for this over the Blizzard Strayer. And of course, if you do that, then you do have to build up your crits correctly because you will not have that uh, boost of crit rate through, through that. So, if I'm giving you kind of like an overall recommendation of two character banners, I really feel like if you don't have Zhongli, then you almost have to go for this. Unless you're really, really sure that someone down the road is going to give you value. But even then I would say, consider just going for him. And you know, if you get him, you get him. If you lose the 50-50 and you don't, well, you've got a guarantee down the road for someone else. But these, uh, these, web, these banners have already told me that better to get, if you see something that gives you value right now, that's better than getting something that might be valuable Road. So this is the one I would go for if you have if you don't have Zhang, and even if you do have Zhang Li, those constellations look quite formidable. You will pull on this banner if you are a fan of Tartag, and if you're and if you're pulling on that, then you're not listening to anything. say anyway. So, but which is fine. You, uh, you can you can get whoever you want, but I would say. If you're going to pull on either of these banners, pull on this one. As far as the weapons go, we have the Vortex Vanquisher and the Polar Star. I think a lot, I, I know a lot of people are kind of hoping that we would get the uh, Staff of Homa. We got this thing in here. I would leave this thing. Increases shield strength by 20%. Scoring hits on opponents increases attack by 4% per uh, it, he doesn't He doesn't need his shield strength to be increased by 20%. Just use the black tassel. This thing's not worth it. It might be good for somebody else, but not for him. And even the Polar Star, uh, it's a crit rate bow. I think crit damage bows are a little bit more valuable if you're looking for a if you're looking for a bow for not Tartaglia, but given that this is his signature bow, if you're looking for weapon, probably yet. Um, looking at the four star weapon, seeing if anything pops out at me. Loot is an often disregarded sword. That's the Sacrificial Great Sword. Sacrificial Great Sword is good for just as any sacrificial weapon. Uh, if you are putting this on a support character, want to put more, build more um, uh, energy. Uh, and when I was running Noel as a support, I was actually using this one. And what what's really good about this for Noel is because this has a percent chance to end its own cooldown, you can basically use that to cast her shield twice in a row if it does that. Um, it is kind of niche, though, I suppose. I think the, the sacrificial great swords that I, that I dropped off after she went the full DPS route, I think it's still there. Um, the Dragon's Bane is a really good elemental mastery polearm. If you get this one, you'll probably find it. Uh, the Whip Sith. A lot more people use this than I do. I have this, I have multiple of them sitting in my inventory. Not leveled at all. 
Uh, that doesn't mean it's worthless. It just means I have a character that I want. Every once in a while, I think I found a character that this is going to work well. And then I build them up and I build and I put literally something and something, anything else on. Them. And oh, this is one. So the rust bow is a really good bow. I mean, if you don't like archers because you have to stand in one place and you have to aim, you have to pull, you have to you have to do pull the pull it back. Um, if you don't like doing that, this is the bow for you because it increases normal attack damage by quite a bit. And if you get to refinement five, it increases normal da attack damage by a lot. It does decrease the charge attack damage by 10%. But if that's the part of archery that you hate, I'll show you what I mean. It's just in case you don't. You... So this is the charge attack right there. And then the normal attack, you can just do stuff. Like so uh, anyway, I I put it on Fischl because I kind of built her to be kind of more of a physical bow user. But anyway. You could do something like that. At that one, um, I don't know. I do, I I think this weapon banner might be a pass, unless you really think you've got, unless you really got something in mind for either one of those five star weapons. I think if you're going to pull for anything, pull for Zhongli, uh, and then just just leave this alone. You, if you want Tartaglia, that I don't think the four star characters will really factor into the equation for this. Um, I do think Noel is having Noel as a C6 is really going to help. Um, and if you if you happen to, get it. Oh. I do. Worry it's all about the all about what 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 you think works for you. But I would just say it's either the John Lee banner if you want, to, if you need to pull from, or if you want to up. If uh, if you are already set for John Lee, then uh, then wait for four point one, or at the very least wait a couple weeks because we'll get the preview for four point one fairly soon. So anyway, that is going to do it for me in this video. If you liked this video, please consider uh, leaving a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing to this channel and or following me on Twitch if you'd like to see me do more Genshin Impact. And uh, leave me a comment below. Everything I got right, everything I got wrong, who knows? I probably got at least a few things right. But anyway, I will see you in the next video.